Hello, we'll be analysing the Transformers experiment in this video. So in video one, when I was collecting the data, we were measuring the input and output potential differences for different ratios of primary and secondary terms. So what we're interested to find out is, does the Transformers ratio equation hold up? Does the turns ratio equal the potential difference ratio? So let's have a look at the table. Over here on the left, we have the number of turns in the primary coil, the number of, number of turns in the secondary coil. So these are the different connections that I was testing. So we've got 60 in the primary and 120 in the secondary, then 60 and 240, 120 and 60. So you can see we've got combinations of stepping up, stepping down, and then by different, different proportions. Okay, then we put here our potential difference readings. So this was the primary potential difference, and this is the secondary, secondary potential difference. What we're going to do over here is, here, here we calculate the turns ratio. Since we already know the numbers of turns that we had, I've already calculated those. So it's simply NP divided by N. So 60 over 120 is a half. 60 over 240, 0.25, sorry. And then we have the potential difference ratio that's going here. And we've got a percentage difference calculation between this and this. Okay, so that'll give us some indication of how close or how far away we are. Since we're dealing with fairly simple numbers, in some ways, this is, uh, this, you could say this is overkill. Um, and I'm gonna do some other things as well, which you could say is overkill. But sometimes your data isn't so neat, and it's not, especially if you're dealing with large amounts of data, it's not so obvious whether your data is following a linear relationship. So I'm going to show you a method using a spreadsheet for calculating a value that gives you an indication of how good the linear correlation is. So let's put the data in and then see how we do that. Right, so we've got 3.07. All right, there we go. So remember, these are our benchmark ratios that we want to compare the potential difference ratios to. So we've got 0 0.5, 0 0.57, 0 0.25, 0 0.29, 2, 2.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.62, 4, 5.16, 2, 2.61. You can, you can see a lot of agreement there, but some divergence like this. This is a bit of a divergence as well, and this one here, well, these two as well. So there's some divergences. How significant are those divergences though? Like I said, we've got some percentage differences here. So we've got 14% going up to 30%. So a fairly large percentage difference. But how much of that could be accounted by energy losses and so on and so forth? Um, well, let's have a look at a graph first. So I've done a bar chart that we can compare. You can see Yes, there are some differences in the heights, but largely it seems to be following a similar pattern, the two ratios, so that's good. But again, I like to quantify things if they can be quantified. So you, actually, just by virtue of plotting the PD ratio versus the turns ratio like this, so turns ratio is on the x-axis, PD ratio on the y-axis, you can actually turn on the R-squared value which is something I'll be showing you in just a moment. And that, the closer that is to one, the stronger the, uh, the linear correlation and the less down to chance it is. So what that means is that this potential difference ratio, which was our output, is very closely tied, so much so that we'd say is, it is consequential of the turns ratio. So the turns ratio is causing this PD ratio to happen because it's so close to one. So that's 0.9996. But yeah, you can see that nice straight line there. And down here, I actually compute 
the correlation value. Okay, so what we do here, the spreadsheets have a formula called coral, which stands for correlation. Okay, and then we put into that our potential difference data. So I just select this column of data here as the first argument of the spreadsheet formula. Okay, so you put that in there. And this is the turns ratio here. So I select that column for the second argument. So that gives us the correlation value, sometimes called R. And then over here, R squared is that value squared. Yeah, so if that's R, that's R squared. Makes sense. You just square that. So I'm using that shift six, the carrot character for that. And so, yeah, this, this one, the closer that is to one, like I just said, that tells you that this potential difference ratio is not arising as a matter of chance, it is arising because of the turns ratio. So, because we're so close, um, we know that that's coming as a consequence of that. Okay, so I use the built-in spreadsheet formula, but in my spreadsheet, I'm going to also include this table here, which will calculate uh, the it will calculate the R value in a more manual method, so you can see actually how it is calculated, okay, rather than it just being a black box spreadsheet formula that you put data in and you get a number out. So, so these are the steps to calculating it. Firstly, we put our X data in here, so this is the turns ratio. This is the PD ratio. Okay, we work out the mean of that, and we work out the standard deviation of that. So that those are using built-in spreadsheet formulae there, but standard deviation is GCSE statistics. So hopefully that's well known how that's worked out. So the same for these mean and standard deviation. Then over here we are computing the x value here minus the mean, which is this, divided by the standard deviation. Do that for all of those and then we do that for the y data so this is the y value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation for all of those okay and then we calculate the product of these two these two calculated values here that multiplied by that gives us this so for all of those rows there and then we sum those up down here so it's the sum of these values here and then r is one is one divided by the number that we have minus one so that's like your degrees of freedom so you take that the number of data points you had subtract one uh, one divided by that multiplied by the sum of all of these that gives you your correlation value the r value and then we square that so the spreadsheet that i make available for this experiment will include that and uh yeah so the long and short of it is we had a very good correlation so the turns ratio is so closely aligned with the pd ratio that we can accept that the turns ratio equals the pd ratio and i hope that yeah, this is a very easy set of data to work with, but actually when you're doing something where it's not so straightforward, I hope that this is another tool in your arsenal for being able to work with that kind of data and draw some conclusions from it.